Welcome to Four Favorites, brought to you by the Quiet On Set podcast. I'm your host, Jörn Graf, and today I'm joined by Alan Mutley from Maximum Cinema and Facing the Bitch of Truth. He's also a recent voter in the BFI Sight and Sound film poll, questioning what are the best films of all time. So welcome back, Alan, for the second time on Four Favorites. Uh, glad to have you back. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be back. So uh, for anyone not familiar with uh, this format, um, Four Favorites is a show where we invite a bunch of guests and ask them uh, about their four favorites in a specific theme, topic, or a genre. And this month in December, we are asking the question, what are your four favorite animated films? So Alan, uh, let's uh, jump straight in. Uh, before we get into your list, uh, do you have a bunch of honorable mentions that didn't make it onto your top four? I do. Uh, and I think at least two of them are probably some all-time favorites that I then ultimately mm -hmm. cut for a wider range of representation in my actual top four. So one of them is uh, Pixar's Toy Story, which I maintain is my favorite Pixar movie because, uh, well, you know me, I'm like a film history buff. So yeah. like uh, first feature length uh, computer animated film. Uh, yeah, that is remarkable. But I also think it's probably to me one of the, if not the tightest and most well-written Pixar movie. So uh, mm -hmm. would, would be a shame not to mention it. Then this is not a film technically, but it's a 100 minute long mini series, uh, Over the Garden Wall, created by Patrick McHale, who recently co-wrote uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which is just a, yeah, it's a beautiful 100 minute mini series about two kids lost in the woods. Mm. Uh, and it's a kind of dark fantasy, but still suitable for children. So yeah, I, again, I would be angry with me if I didn't point people in uh, the <laughs> direction of Over the Garden Wall. Yeah. Then Fantastic Mr. Fox also just uh, narrowly missed the uh, uh, narrowly missed the cut because I already have a stop motion film in yeah. my actual top four. And then the Triplets of Belleville or uh, Le Triplet de Belleville uh, by Sylvain Chaumet, which uh, is yeah probably my favorite French animated film again because it's kind of weird and a little creepy and I love it for that. <laughs> yeah, you need a little bit of a variety in the exactly. little bit of every. Uh, did you want to manage, mention Spirited Away? in this as well or uh yes sure because uh if people are loyal li uh, listeners to this podcast or do quiet on set they know that uh one of the teasers i could give back in the zurich film festival episode for my uh sight and sound top 10 was that spirited away made the cut yeah. and spirited away didn't make the cut here in the animated top four have your gripes with that as you want i just thought well spirited away is definitely up there with my favorite uh uh, Ghibli movies it's uh, mm -hmm. up there with the best films ever made but yeah. uh, if we go by favorite animated films then you know we can uh, we can shuffle the deck a little bit yeah. and with Ghibli to have such it's just such easy pickings to go for great movies so yeah. I more or less picked one of my I don't know six or seven running favorites at random and thought okay let's go with that one and it's not spirited away I pretty much <laughs> did the same for my own show I ended up having two Ghibli picks on, on my list. But uh, yeah, looking forward to the inevitable Ghibli pick that will come uh, later in your list. So uh, that's all your honorable mentions. So let's start off with uh, a bit of, you know, you said you are a, like a historical, not historical, is that the right word? Uh, a, a film critic that uh, loves to look back, you know. We got a film from uh, 1926. It was a movie that I didn't have to catch up on. I somehow already caught this one uh, because it's it's uh, a great film that I also really love. Uh, it's by Lotte uh, Reiniger. Um, and I don't know how you would translate uh, the type of animation into English because, you know, I, I know the, the word in, in German. We both know. We're both yeah. Uh, Swiss, right? But uh, how would you how would you describe the animation in uh, the Adventures of Prince Ahmed? Uh, the Adventures of Prince Ahmed is probably like something like silhouette uh, silhouette animation, something yeah. like that, where you just cut out shapes of uh, paper with scissors and then you and you animate them as shadows, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that generally holds the title as the uh, the first animated feature film. Yeah. Uh, ever if i'm uh, if i have my facts here straight or if i remember my film studies uh yeah. class correctly <laughs> same for me that's why i've i've seen it <laughs> i took a class uh, of animation and it's uh very much one thousand one nights inspired mm -hmm. uh it's uh, you know a classic relatively classic story but it's also yeah. uh so, sort of a, a very involved very um 
full of like a, an adventure story full of effort and like with yeah. uh, with monsters and other mm -hmm. uh and other fantasy elements and the way they are just translated or they have been transferred into this uh, shadow play uh format is mm -hmm. just from a technical standpoint mind mind blowing yeah. and it's just as you say it's a really beautiful film it mm -hmm. Uh, it's from the 20s, uh, and as a lot of people don't know, not all the movies in the 1920s were uh, in black and white. Yeah, uh, because this one actually uses color in a really in a really gorgeous way. Uh, so, yeah, allow just for that, uh, I think it dis deserves a spot on this list. Yeah, it's a bit hard to, I guess, get a hold of, uh, especially mm. these really old films, because like, what version are you getting? But usually, mm -hmm. I think you can't go wrong. Um, if you do have access to the Criterion streaming channel, yeah. they do great restorations and there's a the beautiful version uh, up on there uh, of, of the adventures of Prince Ahmed. Uh, so go check that out uh, for anyone who f feels like, you know, Disney was the start of <laughs> animation. No, it's actually uh, right here with Lotte Reiniger. She's got some um, great little adaptations in her full filmography. Uh, mm -hmm. So go check those out. Uh, next up, we are... Sticking with the adaptations, but <laughs> not sticking as closely to the uh, source material with Alice from 1988. Uh, I don't know if I should try to pronounce the director's name. Maybe yeah, you'll give it a, a, a shot. Maybe you're more familiar with, with him. Uh, well, I am basing this on my very, 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 very rudimentary uh, knowledge of Czech, plus right. some people whom I've come into contact with who pronounce this name at me. So let's give it a go. <laughs> Jan Schwankmeier. Yeah. Uh, Czech director uh, and Alice, as the title suggests, is an adaptation of Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and it's as you said, uh, as you said, it's a stop motion film mm -hmm. mixed in with uh, with live action. So Alice is played by uh, a real human girl, and uh, Wonderland is basically a stop motion nightmare scape with uh, <laughs> creepy taxidermy, fish skeletons. Mm -hmm. uh, everyday objects just being animated to uh well basically torment little alice as she makes her way through wonderland and i think that's yeah. uh first of all a really beautiful uh way of telling this story because mm -hmm. stop motion i don't know alice and alice in wonderland just gives me kind of a stop motion vibe yeah uh and it also really captures the again it's like it, it captures the creepy aspect that is mm -hmm. that is there to the story like you have this little girl who goes to wonderland but then uh it's all just it's not so wonderful but it's actually uh quite scary and mm -hmm. this is then something of course that tim burton would pick up on in his uh ill-fated versions yeah uh, in the 2010s uh but yeah if you want to see dark alice in wonderland then uh, jan schwankmeyer's alice is um uh, definitely one for you it's a great film that does like the was it all a dream um maybe maybe not in mm -hmm. in a way that's not like tacky but it feels like the it really works in the story and uh, yeah. with uh, with a minimal amount of dialogue as well. It, it works, exactly. Yeah. It works well just, uh, yeah, with, with the action that it portrays, which is something um, I'd also say about, like, especially the opening of your next mm -hmm. film, uh, which is beautiful. Uh, we are we have arrived at the Ghibli uh, stop, Woo! the pit stop, uh, flying up high as you have to in uh, whatever Miyazaki film you are watching. And we're talking about the 2009 castle in the sky one of my favorites as well so was it also not from the from the 80s oh sorry i wrote in the wrong number yeah this is, <laughs> uh not from obviously it's not from 2009 it's not, it's from uh 18 and uh, 18 now we move back the whole century uh no it's from 1986 but yes it's castle in the sky yeah. the reason i picked this is because it was not my first miyazaki film it was not my first miyazaki film that i liked i think mm -hmm. i first saw uh i must have seen uh, first seen spirited away and i remember liking spirited away but like i wasn't quite sure what to do with it when i saw it for the first time when i was like 18 or something yeah and then uh, a friend of mine had a bunch of ghibli dvds which she then uh, graciously lent to me and one of those was castle in the sky and yeah. i uh, watched that and i was just absolutely transfixed because mm -hmm. that was like oh it's just it, i mean it's kind of like uh what speaks to me about uh, Prince Ahmed, it's uh, just a rousing adventure story. Yeah. Uh, and an adventure story that is anim and that is directed, uh, written and animated by Hayao Miyazaki, which means lots of flying, mm -hmm. uh, 
lots of uh, shifting allegiances uh, along uh, among the characters. So yeah. you, I, I just love a movie where you have to change your mind about certain characters several times in a movie, and this mm-hmm. is one of the one of like the prime examples of that. And yeah, it just puts me in mind of uh, you know being a kid, believing in going out and going on adventures. Yeah, I, especially I, I I remember watching this pretty early on because um we did a, a, a Studio Ghibli marathon in this ho- household at the start of the <laughs> pandemic, and you know Castle in the Sky is really early in uh, Miyazaki's filmography. Um, pretty much the second really uh like the second big film he does under Ghibli. And mm-hmm. uh, arriving just at that castle in the sky and those, oh, yeah. uh, those um, robots, I guess, uh, up mm-hmm. there. Th- there was something about it that just, that just brought a tear to my eye the first time I watched it. It's, it's so, so magical, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, if, for anyone, I feel like it's, it's one of the Studio Ghibli films that is, is a bit uh, over, overlooked. Um, one that, not get, that doesn't get talked about like as much as 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 a favorite but uh yeah great pick uh glad that i got to talk about it here as well it's like i'm That's trying the, to shift yeah. through the other uh, like four favorites as soon as they mention the studio ghibli pick i'll, I'll jump uh, on that as well uh but that brings us to to the last uh pick on mm-hmm. your list now this time i think i do have it right with the year it's 2015 i think so yeah yeah, yeah. okay so we're talking about a, a short film uh here uh now um about 17 minutes long from uh don herzfeld world of tomorrow part one um is is your pick here so Indeed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Don Hertzfeld. Ever since I first saw World of Tomorrow, I think in 2015 when it came out, uh, Don Hertzfeld just lives rent free in my head <laughs> because uh, he, if you don't know him, he is, or if listeners don't know him, he is an uh, animation artist from Texas. He was uh, Oscar nominated in the early 2000s uh, mm-hmm. for like a very weird uh, short film that he did, and he basically has this. His style is sort of a marriage of uh, stick figures, uh, existential philosophy, and sort of edgelord adjacent humor. Yeah. Uh, but I think the edgelord humor has kind of quieted down since uh, since his Oscar nomination. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but I mean, it's still very absurdist humor. Yeah. With uh, like pairing very insightful, very deep observations on human life with just uh, yeah, as I said, very absurd humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the world of tomorrow is uh, basically the, the summation of his of his work to date. I think it's 17 minutes long, as you said, and it's uh, just a dystopian, but also weirdly comforting vision of the far future, uh, as communicated by um, a clone uh, inviting the original person from whom she spawned into the future to uh, look at Earth in the year. 2000 who knows what mm-hmm. uh, as earth is about to be uh, is about to be destroyed and it's it's surreal it's uh, existentially troubling it's extremely funny it's extremely sad and uh, i love it a lot yeah captures captures you captures something it's it's weird that yeah. style is so easy to to connect with in a sense to mm-hmm. to do something existential or uh, feel like it's it's something that sometimes like pixar tries to do and they, mm-hmm. they uh, you know, pull out all the stops with the music and like beautiful animation, making the eyes as, as watery and big as possible <laughs> to draw something out of you. And then something with stick figures and, uh, you know, a simple uh, through line uh, manages mm-hmm. to to uh, take you that much further. Uh, what did you think about the the sequels here? Or I guess the, yeah, this, the part two. Um, yes, part two, parts two and three. I also really like those. Um, I think think they sacrifice some of the simplicity that makes the first world of tomorrow mm. so appealing to me mm-hmm. um but i also have to say i saw the or, or i've seen the original uh the orig- or the first world of tomorrow like six or seven times at this point uh and i've only seen the second part two i've only seen twice and part right. three i've only seen once so mm-hmm. uh, and those are like much more complex in terms of plot yeah so, so uh, yeah, I definitely have to give those ones uh, a go again before I can definitively like pl- rank them in the in the Hertzfeld canon. But uh, I also I'm really fond of the of parts two and three as well. Right. Well, I had to catch up uh, on those. I haven't seen them, and I, I couldn't uh, get a hold of part three. It's a bit hard to, I guess. Mm. Oh, I, I guess you just uh, have to um, 
I think it's, it's probably out on some like um, Vimeo or something like that. Where you it's can probably on Vimeo, some, yeah. Some, somewhere so. like that. So you you could if you want to <laughs> watch all of them. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for, for your list. Uh, glad to have had you back. Alan, um, we'll definitely have you back in the future if you agree to come back. Looking uh, forward to it. Uh, you, yeah. you, give me a, you give me reason to, to list something and I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's yeah it's uh, i mean it's the same for me and lachlan i give him the reason to watch something weekly i think he wouldn't do that otherwise so I'm glad to be the the catalyst you know to uh some more uh film content uh but yeah thanks for tuning in to four favorites as always so don't forget to uh drop your lists down below and um also subscribe to the channel leave a like if you want um we got more content here all throughout december there's New episodes of Four Favorites uh, every, I think, three days so far. We got a pretty stacked lineup um, coming. And we also got a podcast that comes out weekly, some bonus reviews, some trailer watches, uh, a bunch of content on the site. So uh, don't miss out. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon.